mi amor. ¡Papá! ¡Niño! Bueno. So, um, I hope everyone enjoyed that intro. Uh, welcome back to CBR 100, Introduction to Charge Blade and Rise. In this lecture, we'll go over the advanced details about the kinetic and thermal energy conversion rates of each of your moves, along with the art of guard pointing. For those of you struggling to follow along, please review the previous lecture in this channel. And without further ado, as mentioned in a previous lecture, Sewing the blade against a rough surface will cause the shell in the charge blade to heat up due to friction. In this scenario, you are converting kinetic energy into thermal energy. However, not all kinetic motion provides the same amount of thermal energy. Given that other moves also vary in the amount of heat they generate, now would be a good time to start categorizing them and labeling these moves with how much heat they generate. This brings us to latent heat values. Latent heat value, or LHV for short, is a unit of measurement given to each move that generates heat in the shells. It takes 10 LHV to reach yellow heat levels, 16 to reach red, and 24 to overheat. Most basic attacks with your blade will generate one unit of LHV. From here, allow me to list the exceptions. Moves that have a LHV of 3 are the elemental roundup at the end of charging your shield, the morphing slash when switching modes, the spinning slash at the end of any combo, and the condensed slash at the end of charging your blade. And last but not least, the unique case of the charge double slash. The first hit provides you LHV of 6, while the second hit provides you LHV of 3. Together, the double slash makes a total of 9 LHV, which is why one hit is all it takes for you to reach yellow after landing charge double slash. Now you might be wondering, is this amount of detail really necessary? Would you really apply this knowledge in combat? I think a demonstration would answer both questions. So let's see this knowledge applied in action. Those of you who took Mounting 101 with Master Utsushi would know the first hit of a mountable monster would cause us to mount it. So here, I choose to land the first hit of the charged double slash. This brings us to LHB of 6, the total of 10 needed to get to yellow heat levels. After doing the usual wall bangs, I aim my wire bug at the downed monster while unsheathing to land a jumping slash, increasing my LHB by 1 for a total of 7 out of 10. Finally, I know that pressing X after a jumping slash would combo into a spinning slash, which has a LHB of 3. This brings me to a total of 10 out of 10 needed to reach yellow. Now comparing this to doing another charge double slash after the dismount, I save precious downtime to land a couple of hits or charge my weapon before the monster gets back up. It's also important to mention that using your shield to block attacks will also increase your LHV, but the exact amount can vary depending on the force of the attack. While there's no accurate way to measure this in every scenario, here's a rule of thumb. If an attack knocked you off balance significantly, it likely produced 3 points. If an attack hardly moved you, it probably only gave you 1 point. Ultimately, the less force you felt, the less heat it generated. This shouldn't come as a surprise since we've covered basic thermodynamics. All in all, understanding latent heat values frees you from the shackles of spamming the charge double slash every chance you get, providing you flexibility in your moves and efficiency in your time. Now you might be wondering, what determines how far we're knocked back? There are two factors involved in this equation, how hard we're hit, and how fortified our shield is. The stronger the attack, the further we're knocked back. The stronger the shield, the better we hold our ground. By installing higher levels of guard in your charge plate, you can fortify your shield, making it easier to withstand attacks while losing less ground. However, manually installing more guard isn't the only way to fortify your shield. As mentioned before, a charged shield provides you with two free levels in the guard skill. What wasn't mentioned before is the art of guard pointing. Guard points are specific moments in your moves where your shield is placed in front of you. Unlike normal guarding, 
where your shield isn't moving, you are in motion when you swing your shield forward during a guard point. Therefore, some of that forward force mitigates the incoming force of the attack. This effectively provides you with two more levels in the guard skill. Given that these guard points exist within the regular moves you conduct, taking advantage of them will further increase your combat efficiency, protecting you while you charge, reposition, and attack. Now, let's go over all the guard points. Drawing a weapon in the axe state by pressing ZR will provide a guard point at the start. Charging your shield using the elemental roundup move will give you a guard point at the end. The spinning slash at the end of any combo gives you a guard point at the end. Pressing ZR will combine your shield and blade into an axe. The first few frames during that animation is a guard point. Blocking an attack here will keep you in your normal mode. But if the animation plays through without blocking an attack, you'll find yourself in the axe mode. A slow, clunky, and unpleasant state to be in for standard charge blade operations. Consider this as punishment for mistiming your guard point. Now that you're in axe mode, you will need to press ZR plus X again to transform your weapon back to normal. During this transformation, you'll find a guard point at the end of this animation. And last but not least, the Fate Slash. The Fate Slash guard point is easy. And by easy, I mean easily the hardest and most complicated guard point to use. After a basic attack, moving in a direction while pressing A will see you do the Fate Slash. This ending animation looks very similar to the elemental roundup and spinning slash, right? You guessed it. That's a guard point at the end. Any attack in front of you at the end of the fate slash will be guard pointed. You can fate slash forward, backwards, left, and right. By default, if there's no directional input after starting the fate slash, you'll face the direction you started. But by aiming in a direction during the slide, you can alter the direction you face at the end of the fate slash, and consequently, the angle of your guard point. While the Fade Slash Guard Point is flexible and maneuverable, it requires excellent timing and foresight as to where and when the attack might be coming. I recommend practicing other guard points first before trying the Fade Slash. With all that said, guard pointing requires practice and experience to utilize effectively. So why are we going through all that trouble just to improve our guard? The practice among you might have discovered that pressing X plus A after guarding attack will put you into position to do a UAD or AED, but only if the attack didn't send you will. The observant among you might have noticed the trend. The harder the monster attacks, the longer it takes for them to recover. Finally, the smartest among you can put these together. In order to unleash our most powerful moves, the AED and UEDs, right when the monster is recovering from their attacks, we must be able to withstand those attacks without losing our footing. Ultimately, this is why all the aforementioned things that fortify our shield are of significance, not just for protection, but also as a means to unlock opportunities for counterattacks. With all the information provided in this lecture, I hope you'll walk away with a newfound appreciation for charge blade operations in the field. Their complexity gives you flexibility, while the seemingly unintuitive nature gives you room to optimize. Now, with the core controls of the charge blade explained. Next lecture, I'll go over all the switch skills in Wirebucks, all of which are built upon your current understanding of the charge blade. So stay tuned and subscribe to be notified when that lecture comes out. Until then, I hope you'll continue your studies in mastering the hunt.